Dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So the first question that somebody, uh, that a, I think a sister submitted is, what's the meaning of obey your husband? She said, like, if your husband says, I can't eat apples anymore, is that what it means? Like, how literal are we t- talking here? Because I know people who treat their wives like slaves, she says, like they own them and they have to do and listen to all these crazy things. Okay. So uh, the sister is asking about the meaning of obeying your husband, right? Um, so look, let's let's frame the answer, first of all, and say that, you know, as the Quran points out, you know, marriage is built upon... Mawadda uh, and Rahma, right? It's built upon, uh, upon love and mercy, right? And that's the default kind of relationship that we should be having within a marriage. Okay, it's not really about, uh, you know, some kind of competition regarding rights and duties. You know, the the rights and the duties they're there, but the main modus operandi of a marriage cannot be two people competing with each other with regards to rights and duties, right? That would not make for a harmonious marriage and that just turns marriage into the opposite of mawadda and rahma, right? So if we start with that, first of all, that marriage is built upon mawadda and rahma, so obviously when you're going into a marriage, husband and wife, you're going in wanting to make it work, wanting to build a family and wanting to care about the other person, right? It's not, it's not about like bossing somebody around, right? So if, as the sister is saying, that there are some brothers that, you know, seem to take um this concept of obedience to uh a kind of extreme you know uh then you'll see that those types of marriages don't don't really work you know there's always somebody m- extremely miserable in those sorts of marriages uh and in a normal marriage in a normal well functioning mar- marriage you don't you won't ever need to use or you will very rarely need to use words like obedience, you know, even though obedience, first of all, what does obedience mean, right? Because in the English language, obedience has like a, a bad, a negative connotation, right? It's like, especially in our um, current context, we, we, we don't want to be, uh, we, we don't like the idea of submission, obedience, you know, even the word Islam, submission. It's like when people hear the meaning of it, they think, well, you know, I want to be free, right? They think it's the opposite of freedom. But, but that's not the case. You know, when it comes to obedience, it's basically about there being somebody who is the head of the house, right? <laughs> so just like in a company or if you're going for travel, we're encouraged to have an Amir, aren't we? Right? We're encouraged to have somebody who's like the in, the person in charge. In a company, there's a CEO. And the CEO has the final say. The CEO, a good CEO is not a tyrant. A good CEO is somebody who consults uh, the people who work with him, right? Or her. Like, the good CEO would literally uh, be consulting their team and take everybody's needs, everybody's perspectives on board. But then, at the end of the day, the CEO needs to make the final decision because the CEO is the leader, right? The buck stops with the CEO. So in that, in that way, the husband is uh, the head of the house. He's responsible. So, so head of the house doesn't just mean 
somebody who wields power, it also means somebody who has the highest responsibility. So if the family is going astray, the buck stops with the husband, actually, right? If the family is, uh, their needs are not being met, the husband is ultimately responsible. So because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places a greater burden of responsibility upon the husband, right? The, the responsibility to financially provide, the responsibility to educate, to make sure that all of the the normal needs of his uh, wife as well as his children are met. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gave the husband uh, that level of uh, kind of authority, right, over the family. And so, you know, just as you would obey the Amir or the CEO of an organization, you obey your husband in that sense, right? Now, obviously the purpose of that wasn't that the husband tells the wife, you know, that she can't eat apples and things like that, okay? That's that's like taking it to another level, right? Um, to be honest, for example, a CEO who micromanages his team usually ends up being hated by the, by his team. And similarly, a husband who's going to be like that, right, who's, who wants to uh, control and manage every single aspect of his wife's life is also going to not be very liked, right? Like deep down, there'll be a lot of resentment, there'll be negativity. So obviously, it's, it shouldn't be like that, right? Um, but the point is that if the husband... So when we're talking about this idea of ta'a, of uh, obedience, if the husband asks the wife to do something, okay, and it's something permissible and it's not going to cause her any harm, then she should do her best to do it. Okay, so in Islam, there is the moral responsibility that the wife has to, to obey the husband in as much as she can as long as it doesn't harm her and as long as it's uh, something permissible, right? So not that he's asking her to do something harmful to herself or something that is haram. Of course, then she does not have to obey him, right? But when it comes to other than that, then she will get great reward if she complies. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith, graded sahih, if a woman prays her five prayers, fasts her month of Ramadan, guards her chastity, and obeys her husband, she will enter paradise from any gate she wishes. Okay? The famous hadith. إِذَا صَلَّتِ الْمَرْأَةُ خَمْسَهَا وَصَامَتْ شَهْرَهَا وَحَصَّنَتْ فَرْجَهَا وَأَطَاعَتْ بَعْلَهَا دَخَلَتْ مِنْ أَيِّ أَبْوَابِ الْجَنَّةِ شَاءَتْ now, that's very clear. So this is one of the means for, for a wife to actually uh, gain the pleasure of Allah. Uh, that isn't, it's not intended to encourage tyranny. No, I think it's, uh, the purpose of it is for there to be order, right? And uh, for just as, um, I'm using the analogy of a company, just as any successful company needs a CEO, a successful family needs a CEO, right? Uh, I hope that answers the question. Um, what did you see? People who treat their wives like slaves. Okay, obviously Islam doesn't encourage that. It discourages that. You know, the Prophet ﷺ said, the best of you are those who are the best to their wives, right? For, for many sisters, it's about negotiation, okay? It's not about you know black or white answers it's negotiation so in any healthy marriage you should negotiate with your husband if your husband has a personality that's quite strict or rigid or you know human beings come with different personalities um, if you can negotiate with that type of personality you know uh, if it comes to a very extreme stage 
have mediation, that kind of thing. You know, have somebody come and mediate between you or arbitrate between you. In other words, make a decision to help you uh, fix things or make things better or go forward with new, renewed uh, intentions, etc. All of those means are there at our disposal. So uh, it's, a, it's a really big question, actually. So I hope I've begun to answer it, right? The norm in a marriage should not be obviously people being treated like slaves, right? Uh, but also I would say to the sister, be careful, you know, be careful not to judge people's marriages because, you know, sometimes you might be only seeing one side of it or you might have only heard one side of it, right? Or sometimes a sister might be having a bad day and she's complaining about her marriage, etc. That doesn't necessarily represent the whole of her marriage. It doesn't necessarily represent, uh, you know, the reality of her marriage even could just be a bad day. So be careful not to, because I'm assuming the person who asked the question is not married and maybe seeing other sisters um, and maybe assuming sometimes that they're being treated badly or something might be putting this sister off the idea of marriage, you know. The point is marriage isn't like a transaction. You can't make it transactional, I mean. You know, if you if you reduce it to being transactional, then, uh, you know, it's not going to work. It's going to be very difficult to make it work. 